So now the big question is, um, how do we understand Earth's history? Um, and to go and understand Earth's history, we have to think a little bit about how people have understood the Earth through time. Um, so, you know, humans were very inquisitive. We like to take what we see and try to understand it. And we do that by coming up with explanations. So that's, I mean, we do science. That's really what we're doing. Um, and early on, when we try to understand the, you know, what would happen on, on the earth, we go to places and we'd go climb up a mountain and humans, we would start, you know, here, let's draw us drawn up the mountain. We're going up and along and eventually we get to the top and at the very top, we find these little things. And when we go and we look at it, we find fossils. Fossils at the tippity top of a mountain. Now this person walking along finding that, this is very strange. This is an, a shell and it's rock hard and it looks very similar to these modern shells that are in the ocean. But the question is, how in the world did these shells get up here? Now, these creatures, maybe they're little snails, you know, they don't move very far and they have to be in water in order to get where they are. So how do we try to understand that? Well, basically the whole idea with geology is we've been going through time trying to understand and explain things. Originally, um, much of our understanding of the earth and its history was related to religion. So, um, early philosophers and um, people tried to understand, and even early geologists tried to understand the earth and explain things based on what was written down in the Bible. So we could go back and try to look at the chronology of generations recorded in the Bible to try to figure out how old the earth was. These early ideas told us that the earth was very young and that when we would find things like these fossils up on top of the hill, that were similar to fossil, well, not fossils, modern day organisms in our shallow oceans and our seas right on the coast to try to explain how these could get here. We didn't have this idea that the earth is very old and that we have processes happening today that have been going on for a long time and that the earth is old enough that things can happen. Um, but what we try to do is figure out how does this happen? And what they came up with were ideas like, oh, you know, we read through the Bible, we have the biblical flood, the Noachian flood. So that could, you know, if God were to be really angry and decide to, you know, wipe out civilization, the people. When that flood came through, this water would get lifted up and these fossils could be left on top of the rocks. So this idea what happened, our kind of our early understanding of the earth, was that the landscape that we see, the canyons, this whole thing, these were formed by catastrophic events. And it's this idea that kind of led to this thing called catastrophism. Let me make sure I spell it correctly. Okay, and so this is the idea that the earth is shaped by catastrophic events. Okay, um, these events are very sudden. They're violent. And um, they are very short-lived. Okay, and so when you're trying to remember it, um, this would be like that biblical flood. So basically, um, people who fall into this field are really trying to make all the observations that they see on the earth fit into what is explained in the Bible. All right, so this is not what geologists believe today, and even for a long time. So over time, you know, people continue to make observations. They find fossils and they started looking at the landscapes and making observations of the rocks and then saying, oh, this rock 
is found here. When I look at this rock unit, it always has these fossils, and above it is this rock unit that always has these fossils. And you'd find the same order or succession of rocks in one place and another. Um, so much that you could go, and if you found one rock down here in a different place and you knew what the pattern was elsewhere, you could then start looking higher up in the rock sequence and you'd find those same things. Um, so basically, we had a lot of very smart people making observations and then realizing that, you know, there's a pattern that we're seeing. And when we look at the landscape, you know, if we were just to allow more time to happen, the things that we see happening on the Earth today could actually lead to really big changes over geologic time. And that comes into this idea of uniformitarianism. Okay, this was an idea that was first proposed by James Hutton in that's an N in the 1700s, um, and he's the father of father of modern day geology. And so basically, he went down and said Hutton said that all of the processes that we see happening on Earth today have been happening at the same rates for all of geologic time, and that given enough geologic time, these processes, which happen very gradually can accumulate and make very large changes over time. Um, so that includes our streams, water flowing over the landscape, can erode rocks, can pick up and transport sediment and deposit it later. With enough time, we can deposit enough sediment to then create different rock units. Um, we can also um, have weathering shape landscapes and all of this stuff. So this whole idea um, kind of is best summarized by Charles Lyell, um, who came along later in like 1830, and he liked to say the present is the key to the past. All right, I think it's a great phrase. Okay, and basically this idea is that we don't need these biblical events to try to explain the earth. We actually have processes that we can document. We can watch streams of uh, road. We can watch ocean waves moving around. Um, today we can go and actually calculate the plate mov movements. Um, so we don't need kind of other explanations. We got enough going on with our earth and its processes to help us understand um, how things have formed over time. Now, the really interesting thing about this, uh, most everything we talk about is very gradual. And it's these gradual changes that accumulate to create larger scale things. Um, so this includes wind movement, weathering, mountain building, and plate motion. These things tend to take millions of years. And that gets into the idea of geologic time. So something, again, that's often very hard for us to imagine because it's so big because we don't live all that long. Um, but anyway, we can see those changes over millions of years based on this idea. Now, I just want to point out that uniformitarianism doesn't ignore the fact that we do occasionally have catastrophic events. So catastrophic or uh, sudden events, we'll just call them sudden events. What it means, and we see this all the time today, is that even though all of these gradual processes are happening and shaping our landscapes and leaving new rocks behind, we do have really sudden events that happen naturally um, and they do create changes that are unique. Um, so these sudden events include volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes. So these are, you know, storms or um, natural hazards that happen. These sudden events occur over very short time frames. Things uh, we're talking about on the order of days, weeks, months, even years. So things that can happen in human time scales, um, these sudden events, um, and they do lead to changes. So a volcano erupting um, can lead to large lahar deposits that we might see. So we do see records of lava flows and lahar deposits that have happened over geologic time. And it just means we have all of these gradual changes that are always happening and it can 
occasionally big events happen, they're recorded in Earth's history. They still fall in line with this idea of uniformitarianism. Um, but it basically says that, you know, we can go out, make observations today, and really understand our Earth and the Earth's history.